These days, Robin Howard Moore gardens at home with husband Ken. She also designs landscapes built on her connection to soil, plants, and weather since childhood. Her own garden took a back seat when she spent most of her time at Howard Nursery, the family operation that was the go-to spot for gardeners until it closed in 2006. She's seen garden trends change since her grandfather, Eugene Howard, opened a nursery in East Austin in 1912. Some of his tables remind her of the man who planted Austin's landscapes. In the 60s, uh, my mom got more involved in the nursery with my dad, and she and he bought some property at the corner of Keenig Lane and Avenue F. On their new property, Margaret and Jean Howard kept the old hangar where Doc Hale ran a commercial airport from 1939 to 1948. And they built it and made it into more of a retail operation and less of a farm. Um, with more gifts and pottery and bedding plants and little things. Before, at the nursery at Shady Lane, people would come out and pick out their trees and my dad or grandfather would, would go plant them. Margaret and Jean brought their children, Hank, Marcy, Robin, and Jim, into the business early on. From the time we could walk, we were kind of required, especially on weekends. When, when they started the nursery on Keenig Lane, you used to not be able to have businesses open on Sundays, but for some, there was something called the Blue Law. And, but since shopping at the nursery was such a fun family activity, that um, the nursery business was able to be open on Sunday. So we worked every weekend and after school. When I was little, I would go um, add up the checks on the deposit and I would write out the signs. With, had pretty good handwriting. My brothers would do lifting and loading and un unloading trucks and things. In 1977, Hank took over, later joined by Jim and Robin, when their dad died from pancreatic cancer. When they lost Hank to the same disease in 2005, the family decided to close Howard's. And the quality of life of running a seven day a week business just seemed daunting considering we had this family history and we wanted to enjoy life more. Robin redirected her energy into her own garden, pushing up her renovations since she and Ken bought their house in 1978. For the first 10 years we had this house, it was all grass and cherry laurels hugging the fence in straight lines. Then when I got more into design and realized we needed deeper beds and curved lines and more depth and interest, that's when I started trying out new things. And not everything has worked. And I'm not sure that what's working now will be working in five years. At Howard's and at home, Robin watched the swing to perennials from annual bedding plants. You know, perennials have not always been real available on the nursery scene. You had to get them from somebody. There's also a big need for perennials for the shade that will give you color and interest in the shade yet come back. And so I've gotten to be pretty good at that because half of my yard is in real deep shade. Along a curving path and back, she dotted the journey with plants, surprises, and treasured memories. I hope that when other people go back there, they'll enjoy it even though they don't share all of those memories with me. Putting a plant in the right spot is something she taught her customers, carried on now by her son Sam at a local nursery. And there's really so much more than you realize. And if you are only looking at the tags on the plants or reading the books, they'll say things need full sun. Well, for one thing, they're not talking about Austin, Texas full sun. And for another thing, so many things will do okay in less than full sun or less than half a day sun and sometimes even in deep shade if you just try things out. After practicalities, it's time to move on to aesthetics. And so you do want some some varying heights and textures and colors, but you also want some repetition. You want some groupings of things. You don't want to go one of something, one of another, one of something, one of another. I do want to repeat some things because there's a peaceful feel to repetition, but I want more interest. So I, I wanted different heights. I wanted different textures. I wanted some medium sized things. Um, and then I wanted some things lower, but I don't want them necessarily in straight lines 
are perfect little segments. I want them varying and kind of wild and kind of natural looking. Even though we have some little brick borders, I like some things tumbling over. Robin carries her strategy to containers for close-up attention. The final touch is yard art, where Robin crafts attention from memories with vases and old plates. Like the little chairs over there by the little table, they were a gift for my brother, who's not with us anymore. And I painted a maroon, because he was an Aggie, and I love maroon. So everything has little memories for me that make me feel good. When it comes to weather and trends, Robin's seen it all as a nursery owner and gardener. There was one year when um, we had hard, 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 terrible freezes. And the only things that survived were red tip photinias and Indian hawthorns. That year, we couldn't get enough of those, but everybody wanted them because they had made it through the winter. Now the question is, how many more winters have we had like that? So, and, and now those things tend to get fungal leaf spot and other problems, but it, it is funny, the trending of, of gardening. I do think people like more interesting things now, but, but absolutely one of the biggest trends is people want to water less. We're getting rid of more grass and having more xeriscape gardens. And I've done that in the front. I've created some islands with some xeriscape plants and then some evergreens, um, trying to get rid of grass, but not necessarily having it look like the West Texas desert. A trend to maintain is the local nursery connection that benefits everybody. And people still tell me, I want you to see something that you talked me into buying. And I mean, so many people say, your father sold me that tree, or sold my mother that tree, and Hank helped me. And we did so much, you know, for free to tell people what to do, and then they'd say, okay, well, where can I buy this for cheaper, because I can't afford to get it here, which would just, you know, make us crazy. But then, um, as, as people really appreciated the advice we were giving them, and we could see how it was helping them. It felt really, really good. Mm -hmm.